Hey, what's up guys? Right, so I know it's a bit unusual of me to release a video midweek, but I felt like I had to address something. I have been bombarded with one question this weekend and you obviously already know what it is. Will I get the Xperia 1 Mark 6 and will I be reviewing it? So to address the big elephant in the room, I thought I'd do a short video about it to explain the thought behind the answer. So unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that last week Sony revealed the next Xperia phones and like most of you, I watched the live presentation. And in a nutshell, I was left pretty underwhelmed and disappointed to be completely honest. Now, this is my view and opinion, of course, because what you want out of an Xperia phone might be completely different to what I expect from it. But let me explain why. See, the Xperia phones always add photography and video at the core. It's always kind of been its DNA with a dedicated shutter button, a range of various pro apps and features that very few other manufacturers offer, even to this day. That's what made it a rather niche product in a sense. Niche is good, but if you are Sony and you want the biggest slice of the pie, what do you do? Well, you got two options really. You either carry on with the same product again and again, burying your head in the sand, hoping for better sales next year, or you drastically change your product to entice a new customer base altogether by changing its core values. Tough one, isn't it? We obviously know which direction they took and they went for the second option, a complete change. So now to make it more accessible and to appeal to a larger crowd, they listen to the people. We want better battery life. Okay, okay, okay. Here's a 1080p screen. Your battery will last two days now. We want photos that look like the iPhones and the Samsungs. Okay, okay, here you go. AI post-processing better than ever before. The Photo Pro app is too complicated. Make it easier. Okay, okay. We have everything under one app now. We want macro. No problem. Calm down. We got this. But what happens when you try to please everyone? Well, you can't. That is the problem here. By making all those drastic changes, they kind of forgot their roots here and they alienated a large portion of people who kept going back year after year because of those core features. Let's take the photo app for example. What really made it great, to me anyway, and I'm sure to a lot of you, was the UI, a layout kind of similar to their Alpha Ranger cameras when using the Pro Mode. Now though, they streamlined it all to look like any other Android or iPhone photo app, but that comes at the cost of legibility, of course. The viewfinder is cluttered, settings are two or three taps away, it's clunky and very counterproductive for a photo enthusiast. It's definitely the opposite of Pro. Then we have the new micro mode. This just seemed to have been put together as an afterthought. Yes, it's great, you can now focus from four centimeters away. Great, but guys, it looks pretty poor. Here's a comparison between the One Mark VI and another phone. Can you tell the difference? And what about the new continuous zoom? Which, to be honest, wasn't the sharpest or the cleanest on the One Mark V to start with. Well, now the results look even softer. Are you happy with a 1080p screen in 2024? I wasn't impressed, I'm not gonna lie. Yes, 4K was a bit overkill, granted, but maybe, you know, going down to your QHD panel would have still improved the battery while still retaining some of that display clarity. The worst part of it all though, and what really makes the pill hard to swallow, it's the price. It's one thing to recycle previously used parts and downgrading some features, but surely you'd expect the price to come down as well, you know, to appeal to that large audience. Well, nope. Now, earlier on, if you remember, I said Sony had two choices, either carry on doing what they were doing or drastically change everything. Well, there was a third option available really. Build and improve on the foundations that they already had. Hear me out. If you're going to redesign the aspect ratio of the phone anyway, you might as well make it slightly thicker and replace the old main sensor with a brand new one inch sensor, which Sony already makes and sells to other phone manufacturers anyway. Then in turn, you also have more room for a bigger battery, which solves your battery life issues. And when it comes to the software, I've said it before and I'll say it again, instead of having three different apps, they should have made one standard camera app for photos and videos, like the ones you find in most phones nowadays, with all the AI processing in the world that, you know, most people crave, and then have a second app, a pro camera app if you like, 
for pro photos, pro videos with the old DSLR-like interface that we all love. And to push things even further, they could have added loads more pro features like raw 48 megapixel shooting or bracketing, I don't know, more features, but they didn't. So at this stage, if that wasn't already clear, no, I will not be getting the Xperia 1 Mark 6. I'm not saying it's a bad phone, but it isn't for me. And whether you should be getting it or not, is down to personal preferences and needs. Also guys, on a final note, I just wanna say that I was almost made to feel like I had to get the Xperia 1 Mark 6, when from day one, I've always said that this channel is all about mobile phone photography, regardless of what device you have. I just happened to have the Xperia 1 Mark 5 and subsequently made videos about it. But yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there, you know, for the people that who thought otherwise. And as a matter of fact, I'll be comparing the One Mark V against another device, but that's the story for another day. Well, Saturday actually, to be precise. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.